heroes in the crowd. These are guys that have gone and already adopted many, many villages. And Roshni is going to tell us more about our Swatesh heroes. I'd like to welcome her to the stage, beautiful Roshni, who is the Director of Marketing for Overseas Volunteer for a Better India, the Water is Life Project. Hi everyone, good evening. Good evening everyone. And yes, Guruji is coming very soon. But before we get uh, to Guruji, it is my very proud privilege. Actually, how many of you remember the movie Swadesh? And what did you think about Shah Rukh Khan's role in that movie? Where he is this NRI scientist, flies back to his country, sees utter despair, and then just jumps in with his training to help. How many of you want to be that Swadesh hero? Come on. Well, I'm very pleased to invite two such heroes that we have amongst us today. Datta Patil, a Yahoo engineer, a social entrepreneur, and a farmer's son. Datta Patil ji. Louder, guys. You want is Baldev Thakurji. He is a social entrepreneur, has done in tremendous work in his village, and is a visionary. Baldev Thakurji. Let's welcome Shri Shri. Gurudev Shri Shri. share the stage with uh, Gurudev and two Swadesh heroes who've actually epitomized what Shah Rukh Khan did in Swadesh. So let me just um, introduce Baldev Thakurji first. Very often Gurudev has given us a sutra that says, deepen your roots and broaden your vision. Have you heard it? Yeah. Baldev Thakurji epitomizes that. He has from his very beginning, which uh, from childhood, he's been very, very involved in, in social service and uplifting his village. And I would like to invite him to tell us how his relief work started. David, again. From the childhood, um, my grandfather has taught us always to give and share. And that mantra has been carried on right now as of in our children also, with my father and my children also. That was in our deep-rooted uh, family thing to just give and share. But it has to be come out also to give and share and all that thing just uh, kept on going. And as I came in touch with Art of Living and Guruji, all this thing has just multifold and took a fast pace also. The things that uh, what I did um, in my village in Nagore, Gujarat, from a long, long time, every time when I'm visiting back home in India, at least once a year I go back, I was very much uh, disappointed and discouraged by the way the women in the village had to go out for toilets into the open fields, along the roadsides. It was so much disheartening me that I need to do something about that. But every time when I talk with my other family and friends in those things, they discourage me. I wanted to build a public toilet out there. They discourage. He says, you will build it. It will not be maintained. Uh, who is going to uh, take care of it? And people would not use it. All the money would go waste. But with the knowledge of Guruji, when I came in all these uh, things, then this thing became more, much stronger. And in 2014, when 
our Prime Minister Narendra Modi came into as a uh, became as a Prime Minister, and when he launched Swachh Bharat Yojana, at that time, it just became a just solid foundation that this is a time that I need to do something for the village and the toilet and bathroom. The reason was all the Swachh Bharat Yojana has created awareness into the people's mind throughout, and the acceptance was much more at that time. So. In uh, 2015, uh, we launched this uh, Adopt a Village program, and we just uh, built a toilet and bathroom. There were 350 of them for each and every family in the house. But this thing did not happen because the very important thing was to create awareness into the, all the villages to make use of this toilet and bathroom. For that, the knowledge of Art of Living came into play. So we brought a wild TP teacher into the village. But six months before we started this program, Wild TP is youth leadership training program, uh, one of the Art of Living program. So the teacher came in, he, what his job was to go to each and every family's home every day for six months, nothing else he has to do, to just go and educate them, create awareness about cleanliness, hygiene, from brushing teeth to taking shower every day, uh, wearing on a clean cloth, and keeping the inside and outside of their home clean. That was his purpose. And then slowly, slowly we got into the satsang and the knowledge of art of living. That brought that complete awareness. And after two and a half years of building the toilet and bathroom, they all are being used properly by people. <laughs> Baldev Ji was a little modest in talking about his achievements, if I may. Uh, he actually revolutionized his village. He raised three crores of rupees, of which 30% was given by him himself. He built 30, 350 toilets, and he also took care of all the basic amenities such as infrastructure. I think he deserves a very big hand. and very, very revolutionizing again with self-development centers for the women and children and the youth in your village. Can you tell us what these, why self-development centers and what are they all about? So, skill development centers. Uh, before I get into that uh, skill development centers, I just want to take you back into uh, the village. Uh, the basic necessities what uh, we created was to just uh, bring them uh, to each and every village. Um, we planted a fruit-bearing tree into the backyard. Mm -hmm. So that is connected with the health. Uh, we, create, we built a inner roads that connects to the main, uh, main roads, so that in the winter, uh, in the monsoon months, uh, they still get that uh, facilities of a dry uh, walkway paths. Other very important thing that was uh, lacking in my village out there, and it lacks in the many, many villages, is the medicine, uh, or the doctors um, uh, not uh, getting enough uh, doctors into the village, or people not taking, uh, or they cannot afford a medicine. So we donated one medical van into the, Bardoli is the, about 10 kilometers from my village. Bardoli is a big center, big city, not very big. Uh, but uh, there is a hospital, a Sadar Hospital, mm -hmm. and we donated a medical van into that hospital, and they have a doctor that goes into the about 10 to 15 villages uh, in a week. So in my village also, it comes twice a week, and it's free of charge. So people will line up every time the medical van comes up, and they have their checkups and uh, any uh, minor problems. Uh, if they have pro things, it's taken care of. The other thing that is taken care of is a very important thing is a launch of uh, Pradhan Mantri's Jeevan Vima Yojana and Jeevan Suraksha Yojana. It is, uh, the problem is multifold there. Uh, there is a lot of addiction problem there. And 
you know, it is very funny thing that when we put out our ILTP teacher for the past six months, he was scared after six o'clock to go into those villages home or in that area also, because a lot of people are drunk out there. And uh, that is a problem that has to be tackled uh, before anything is done. Uh, and that was uh, one of the important uh, factors that we had to do. Yeah. So you heard all the success stories. There's many more. You know, basically, we have great ideas. We want to do. Even the government comes up with many schemes. But nothing happens on the ground. This is because you need leg workers who are fully motivated. We need people who are on the ground who are motivated who take the work as a passion, not just as a duty, you know, you just come and sign your, um, sign the ledger and walk away. You need people with passion who want to see through any project that is, uh, that's taken up. This is the basic lack that we were finding in, in India as well. Not just in India, in almost all tropical countries, this is an issue. There is more chaos. In, right from the forest to the people, there is chaos there. You know, you go to the, um, you go to the uh, cold climate places, even the trees grow very orderly. <laughs> and the Christmas tree is very orderly. But if you go to the tropical countries, there is always a manana factor. <laughs> Manana, I'm postponing it. So when we started with ashram in Bangalore, we, we always look for places which is far away from city to be more quiet. And you know, around the ashram there was not a single tiled roof house. There were only thatched huts all around. Today you will not find one thatched hut there. So when we got there, I found out that uh, villages, the youths are unemployed. And unemployment is increasing day by day. In spite of all the economic growth in India, unemployment rate has not changed. It is even going worse. Every year we are adding millions into this. So we, we call the small scale industry and other uh, directors of other departments from the government and asked them to present all the projects to the youth. I collected 500 youths from all the neighboring villages, asked them to, why don't you be entrepreneur? You know, government cannot give job for everybody. You have to find your own job. So the office very enthusiastically presented nearly 200 different projects. Just imagine it took a whole lot of time, over three and a half hours of telling all the things that they can do. And the youths had reason how none of this will work. <laughs> <laughs> they refuted one by one by one. They said, this you cannot do, this can't be done, this silk we can't do, this we cannot do. Finally, I asked them, look, what is it you want to do? Get us a job in the police or as a bus driver, as a conductor. How many of them can they, jobs can be given? That is when the YLTP was born, what Balde was referring to. And what Patak is also saying, what we did in Latur also, it's because of this YLTP youth. So we started youth leadership training program telling youths how they can empower their surroundings, how they can take responsibility, how they can take a project and see through it. So since then, thousands, thousands of youths have undergone this project about this toilet. You know, the World Bank here from DC, they have they went to India and they want to see these uh, you know, toilets to be built everywhere. And they had long papers and presentations. They had so many plans. 
and it has not worked for so many days, years actually. And then one boy comes, young boy, and he makes his whole village open defecation free in just a matter of a one month's time, in four weeks, less than four weeks. And then the World Bank was awestruck. He said, how did you do it? He just stood up and said, I just did it. <laughs> <laughs> I went and contacted people door to door, spoke to them, inspired them. See, you, you build public toilets, nobody cares for it. Nobody cares for the public thing. But if you have one in your own home, you will definitely take care of it. And so, how you can inspire people to take responsibility is something very, very vital. Even in Latur, where I visited one of our volunteer teacher, Makrand, he is in charge. He's, he took charge, he said, you know, let's go and do these things, you know, deepen the river. And we had some scientists who retired from government, what they could not achieve being in the government. Our counselor is there, but I had to say this. <laughs> So what they could not see, when it goes through bureaucracy, sometimes the enthusiasm goes down. Someone has a big vision, but they cannot go up and somewhere get the things done. Or it doesn't happen for some reason. After their retirement, they still hold the passion and they all came together. So we have water experts who are directors of uh, water resource ministers, ministry before what they could not achieve being in their position. They came all together and we formed a whole team and we rejuvenated hundreds of ponds with the assistance or help of all these uh, YLTP teachers, youth leaders. 30 rivers which were just on the map the village map or revenue map, there was no river really on the ground. They were rejuvenated. See, India has more rainfall than Europe, but still we always have water scarcity. If at all there is any problem, issue, there will be a third world war in the world, it will be about water. China is facing water scarcity, here, California, India. India fortunately has enough rainfall. Rainfall has not reduced, but water table has gone down. It's gone down in Karnataka, in Tamil Nadu, in, in Kolar district in Karnataka. 1,200 1, feet water has gone down. Its ordinary pump is not even able to lift that water. So when the water, when this project started, I tell you, within three months' time, the water tables have come to 60, 70 feet. What he was sharing, the same has happened, with whether it's Latur, whether it's uh, um, Kumudvati River Project, Vedavati River Project, or Palar Project. All these projects have given tremendous um, you know, reserves. And as Devendra Fadnavis has said, you know, 70% of the water project in, uh, in Maharashtra is contributed or attended by Art of Living. Art of Living. Art of Living. <laughs> it's just because there is motivation. There is this vigor and enthusiasm in the youth. I want to tell you one small story about Sholapur. You know Sholapur, there's a, there was this big lake right in the middle of Sholapur, but it was all with weeds, you know, totally covered with weeds. And the mayor said this will cost us 100 crores to rejuvenate this pond, this river. And so he had budget, but uh, you know, they were thinking how, what we do, how we can do this. Thing. We just gave a call to all the NGOs to join us. 
all the school and college kids and the construction engineers, their team, we must have spent about two crores or so. You know, that pond was ready in just a matter of few weeks. Three, four weeks, the pond was clean and it, it could supply water to the, to, to the city. So, if when there is will, there is a way. We can definitely achieve. What it would need is a little bit support. You know, like you have these village pumps, hand pumps. To pump the water up, you need to pour some water from the top. You know, if, the, if you pump and the water doesn't come, it creates a vacuum. So what you do is you just pour a little water into the pump and then you pump, then the water comes. I think this is what is needed. We need to give a little support to the villagers. Now, people like him and like Balde, when they go and talk to people, you know, when you come from US and, and talk to the villagers and the youth, they, they get even more motivated, inspired. And the, of course the help, what you give help would, uh, would encourage them to do more work. In a short period of time, in less than two years, 27 rivers like Latur one we're talking about were rejuvenated in the entire Maharashtra. You know, there are more river projects like that is, uh, is going on now. You know, the programs are happening. And then cleaning the rivers. This is also happening. Hmm? Then school project. This is one something that is very, very needed, you know, especially in the Naxal heat areas in India. There are 220 districts in India which are hit by the Naxal violence. So we are working out of, of the 600 districts. So just imagine these areas where nobody can go, nobody can go and start an industry, can't create jobs. And they, they, we don't know what they are for, they're against everything. <laughs> they're against industry, they're against business people, they're against democracy, they're against religion or cultural things. You really don't know what they're for. And the mindset has become like this. And they, they simply, they call themselves Maoist uh, communist group, or, uh, you know, like Marxist, Leninist, communist groups. They have no idea. They only take two guns. They don't believe in democracy. So these youth, they need, tuning and we have been working on that. I'm happy to announce here, uh, to, to bring to your notice that recently we got 101 such militants from Manipur laid down their arms wow. and surrendered, <laughs> come to the mainstream. Here again our youth, YLTP youths are working, talking to them going into the jungles. Uh, in this area, we have schools, you know, the schools which provide free education to people. Since it's not government schools, it's private run by schools, they have some soft corner for us. So they allow our schools to go on. So we have 45 such schools in Tripura alone. And a total of 53,000 kids are getting free education, medical, food, everything. And it's growing. But 425 such schools are there. Like this, you know, we can take many projects we can take up. Open defecation free villages, model villages, ideal villages. 
We have created uh, several hundred ideal villages now throughout India and all the credit goes to this <coughs> wonderfully smiling, hardworking Yuva Charyas. We call them you know, youth leaders and we are working also in Kashmir to create um, skill development training centers. Recently, we brought 100 of those Kashmiri youths who stole pelters and those who, they, they got money to pelt the stones. Can you imagine? It became almost like a profession. So our um, teachers went, spoke to them, brought them to Bangalore. They've never gone out of Kashmir anytime. There's 100 youths who came and they took the training in skill development, you know, electrical and plumbing, all different things. Total transformation. <coughs> and our Prime Minister was very happy when he saw these Kashmiri youths getting transformed and coming to senses, you know, moving away from violence. And this is what is needed today. See, as long as any city or any village is clogged with alcoholism or violence, mistrust, stress, no development can happen. Basically, we need to bring up the human values, change the mindset, make people take responsibility. And coming to agriculture, again, just like the water, We've got experts, a team, committee who's doing excellent work on agriculture. Recently, we also had a, an international level conference bringing agriculturists. You know, in Andhra Pradesh, in near Varangal, several villages today, it's, it's a drought prone area. There is no rain and very little rain, even if it comes. And people wait for the rain to get some little crops there. In that situation, the the village, the farmers who are trained in our, this technique of just soil, digging the soil and flipping it over, finding more nutrition and new method of sowing, they have been successful. And villagers and the farmers who are getting just 40,000 rupees a year, I'm very proud to tell you they are today earning 13 lakhs. 13 lakh rupees. This is something that has really kindled the interest all across India. So now our uh, you know teachers are busy training people throughout India, right from Himachal, Punjab, to you know, Assam, Guwahati, all over, training the farmers, uh, how they can, you know, make best use of this land space by innovative way of cultivation. Innovation is essential. And that's what is happening. So it's nice, so with all your participation, we can really make a very, very big difference. Hmm? So, and you should visit also, you should come. It'll be nice if you come and then, you know, take a padhyatra to few villages. And this is the way to stop suicide. This is too, suicide is not only because of poverty. Of course, poverty is a big thing. But it's not, that's not the only cause. There is self-confidence that is lost in the farmers. We need to instill that self-confidence, faith. Faith that things will be all right. Faith that you can bear the challenges. See, no one can go on giving them someone loan and they keep losing the money and it cannot go on forever. But if you know someone that they can run their life and uh, there is enough compassion and love on this planet that they don't need to hang themselves. 
तो ये सीलिंग फैन और ट्री दैट इज गुड इन दिस वर्क इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आई फील हियर आई थिंक ऑल योर पार्टिसिपेशन वुड हेल्प इफ यू कैन सपोर्ट दिस यूथ लीडर्स दे कैन वर्क डे एंड नाइट टू different villages talk to the farmers who are in dire need instill the self confidence in them get them into you know satsangs you know mahatma gandhi brought freedom to india by doing satsangs every day he used to do satsangs bring people from all over the community feeling the the feeling of caring and sharing is there and we have endured Uh, in india much worst time during the colonial era there have been droughts for years plagues plagues stickle many seniors elders here would know nobody committed suicide in those days at least not in record <laughs> but why is it today so much the factor is it's not only poverty it's lack of faith lack of confidence lack of trust that someone is going to help us the world doesn't um, there is no dearth of compassion and love there are people in the world all that you need is some food and shelter and that will be provided you know if you are sick there are people who will come to help you when you need it this faith in the goodness of society when that is lost i feel that is where the people want to end their life what do you say yes do you agree with me and we all need to do this governments cannot do it no government can do it no government can instill that sort of self confidence self faith that as public as individuals as ngos and associations we all can do it. the four pillars of democracy the government the media faith based organizations and ngo business and industry these four pillars they all together work together we can transform society thank you thank you guruji your words of wisdom are just beyond i'm sure everyone here is definitely inspired to support a village now you have to be raise your hand if you are Great. Well, the donation tables are over there, and our OBBI team, raise your hand. We'll we'll show you how to sign up, how to get involved, how you can help India being NRIs and connect back with the country. And I want to give a special thanks to Tata Baldev Ji and Roshni for the Swadesh Heroes and everything that you guys have done. And next year we're going to have at least 30 new Swadesh Heroes from this crowd today, at least on stage. right